All right, would you like uh, would you like six more derivatives today? Yes. I thought you did. Okay. Well, let's start with the inverse sine function. Or arc sine is what you might call it too. Okay. So uh, the graph of sine looks like this in blue. And the graph of arc sine looks like in green, uh, or in red, the reflection over the green line y equals x. Why? Because these functions are inverses, right. So we have the picture of the arc sine function in red there, which is the inverse of the sine function. Uh, and, the, and, and why have I only chosen such a limited portion of the blue graph, the, sine, the original sine function, to reflect, or to remind me by picking? Why is it only defined on a certain limit? Because after that, it's not a function anymore. Yeah, yeah, after that, I mean, if, if you were to keep going with this red curve, you'd see that it, uh, immediately after going past the points I had graphed, you'd have it pass, like not passing the vertical line test or however you want to say it, right? So, uh, so you'll remember that that's what your calculator does too. If you like take the inverse sine of a, a number, you always get from your calculator a value between negative and positive pi over 2, right? So that's what you see in the red graph. Anyway, I just thought a little pre-calc reminder. So let y be sine inverse of x, and then I think it's clear because of what we what we know sine inverse means that sine y equals x, and then this is only for this unit now. We can finally do this because I can instruct you to do this. I don't know. Um, I think you could maybe get a good start on this. Let's do implicit differentiation on this expression: sine y equals x. On the left side, you get Cosine y times y prime, and on the right you just get one. Solving solving for dy dx in the manner that even we just did in part b of the warm up gives one over cosine y. Right. So now that's not ideal. We we, we said in many cases that's like we often did leave it there. But if we can get it in terms of x, that would be more ideal. So let's see if we can do that. Um, but what is y? Why it has a, we can already write y in terms of x if we want, right? <coughs> uh, cosine y from the Pythagorean identity is this, do you agree? Hit, hit me with some pre-calc right here. You remember this? Cosine squared is equal to one minus sine squared. So, uh, 1 minus sine squared of y. What is sine squared of y? Well, what's sine y? x. So it turns out that cosine y is, cosine of y is just the square root of 1 minus x squared. And I have a second proof that I'm going to give you on the board, which I think you'll like maybe better. All of this comes down to the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to show you here. All right, so here's a little right triangle. Um, what do we want to draw? We want to draw an angle that has a sine. Uh, we want to draw an angle that has a sine of y. Right, so what do we have? Eventually, we want to know what is the cosine of y. And the cosine of y is cosine of sine inverse of x, by definition. So this is the question. Is what is the cosine of the angle that has a sine of x? So here's an angle. How would I draw it in such a way that it has a sine of x? I can label the sides of my triangle anything I like. Can you set me up here with some lengths of sides such that the that sine of this angle is x? So that's what this is. This is an angle. Let's call it theta for some time being. This is an angle that has a sine of x. So what angle, how would I label the sides? Any way you like. Can make the sure. The right, and then what's this side? My question to you. It's the square root of something. What is it by the Pythagorean theorem? It's just one it's one minus x squared. Root take the square root, right? So wait, okay. So now here comes the question. What is listen carefully? What is the cosine of the angle that has a sine of x? That is, what is the cosine of this angle? 
the angle that has a, a sine of x? Well, it's clearly this over 1, right? Anyway, whatever. The denominator you get by what is, it's, we just determined, the derivative is 1 over cosine y. Okay, well, what's cosine y? Well, cosine y is cosine of sine inverse of x because that's what we said y was at the very beginning. Well, do we have a better way of writing that? And the answer is from this triangle, yes. Right? Yes. So we'll write that in a, in a minute here. I'll have it boxed. We'll write this. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, okay, is the derivative of the arc sine function. So I think it's worth mentioning that these actually come out really nice. You might not have expected the derivative of arc sine to be something like this that involves like no trig functions, doesn't it? Like, it's kind of algebraic. Okay. So let's give you a few more here. I'll derive uh, tan inverse and secant inverse for you here too, maybe. Let's do that real quick. Uh, let's do it on the, yeah, we got, is it working? Yeah, let's do it. Um, oh. All right, so let's do uh, let's do tan inverse. Again, let y be tan inverse of x. Then tan y is equal to x. Taking derivatives with respect to x gives secant squared uh, y times y prime equals one. Again, very similar to in field to the last one. And then we have y prime now. But we'd like to, again, our goal would be, if we can do it, to write this in terms of x, not just y, right? So that's OK. Again, that's 1 over, um, yeah, why don't we not do that actually right now? You put it away. I know it's addicted. So and then even this is not still very ideal, right? If we can find an algebraic expression like we did over here that's better, then I think we would all want it, right? So um, this is a little bit of a hard sell, but let's see if we can see if we can get it here. Uh, again, we're looking for this time we're looking for an angle that has a tangent of x. So how would we how would we draw some? This is the angle I'm talking about. How, how can we label the side somewhat other than Jackson? Is it real this? Yeah. Good. And then what does that make this side? The square root of something? X squared. Yeah, 1 plus x squared, right? So, wait. All right, now here comes the big question. What is, what is the secant of the angle that has a tangent of x? What is the secant of this angle that we've pictured here? It's what? Secant is going to be this over this, right? So it's root 1 plus x squared is the secant of that angle. But wait, we're not looking for the secant. We're looking for the secant squared. So this comes out really nicely. The derivative of arc tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Very nice. Do we have time to do the next one, too? Let's, do, uh, let's also do secant inverse. Are you not paid for the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have boxes. Yeah, I just thought you'd like to see the derivation in case you ever forgot. On a desert island, it's very quick to re-derive them. Just think triangle. Think triangle. Implicit differentiation plus triangle equals these formulas. Do we ever have to do them? You'll never have to do them. I just, there's nothing that I don't want to give you that isn't justified, right? This is a sense making. Uh, discipline. <laughs> All right, let's listen, listen. All right, let's do secant inverse two. Um, this one's a little bit, like, this one's a little bit of a harder sell. You'll see why in a second. Um, um, so let's let's try and do the same thing. What's the derivative of secant y? So you can already see why this might get a little bit crazy here. Because here we get for our derivative one over secant y tan y. All right, so like I said, this is a little messier because we need to figure out what's the secant of secant inverse of x, right? That's what y is, remember. And we also need to resolve this, tan of secant inverse of x. Using the triangle gives what? Let's, let's draw an angle now that has a secant of x. So what would that be? 
Yeah? Yeah. Oh, here we get not quite. Oh, x squared minus one here, right? So far, so good. All right. So I think I think we're ready to do this. Um, this piece over here. What's the tangent? Well, let's ask this one first. What's the secant? You didn't need a triangle for this, maybe. What's the secant of the angle that has a secant of x? Okay. And what's the tangent of this angle that has a secant of x? X squared minus one. This over this, right? All right. Now that is mostly right, except for one small issue, and that's that um, the inverse secant function uh, always carries a positive sign. So we're going to put one other little demand on there, and that's up here too. So anyway, now they're in a box. There they are. Because you were asking, are they going to come up in a box in a second? The answer is yes. There are the three things I just derived, and I spent a lot of time deriving those. And not a lot of, what, are, what am I missing? Yeah, all of the, in fact, all of the three co-functions for these, right? I derived these first, which is interesting. And they, are, they are not all the same, but they are very similar in such a way that you really don't need to memorize anything more, per, per se. Um, this is an identity which is probably not like a... Uh, of maximal importance in your life in pre-calculus, but it is the kind of thing you might have encountered in pre-calculus. Um, the, the inverse cosine of an angle is pi over 2 minus the inverse sine of that angle, which makes sense, right, based on what you know about complements, right? Said another way, graphically, uh, if you look at the inverse sine function that we had earlier, up on the screen, <laughs> I had a graph. Let's think graphically. Uh, what does the inverse cosine function's graph look like? And then what this says is that it's just a reflection of that and moved up pi over two units. They're just shifts of each other, right? It's equivalent to saying that the sine cosine function are shifts of each other by pi over two in the normal world, right? But in the inverse world, okay, there's a vertical shift up and down. So if it's a vertical shift up and down, tell me about the derivative of cosine inverse. The derivative of this will be the derivative of this. What's the derivative of pi over 2? Zero. Zero. What's the derivative of sine inverse of x? Oh, we already have it, except make it negative. All right, the same thing applies to all the co-function identities, right? All the co-function identities are the same, just with a negative sign in front, OK? So know these three, and then be like, if it's a co, an arc co-function, then it's going to be a negative, OK? Eventually, you're going to make a mini book with all these in it to remember how this goes. We, are. we do have a couple. We do have a. No. I, I will tell you. I know, and you can you can probably verify this too. Anytime someone gives you like the opportunity to make a cheat sheet or something like that, I just find that like I make this awesome cheat sheet, and then I go to the test, and I never look at it because like my the act of making it was what awesome. Right? Is that not true for you? Well, yeah, so true. if it doesn't really matter, can you just keep it with us? <laughs> that's very good reasoning, but uh, no. Let me ask you, will you be able to have that on the No. They give you no formulas on the AP test, so we got to. What? For none? They'll have one too. Wait, no, they're going to give us the They do give you dumb geometry formulas. We get the volume of the sphere. So there's no formula sheet at the front of the AP test. All right. Huh? No, we got to do a few Oh, sorry. All right, let's do a uh, let's do a couple of these here. Hey, 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 come on now. Now, right now, you may need to do this with your notes closely in hand. The box that you just wrote, the boxes you just wrote down. Okay. Eventually, you'll get. Thanks, Gus. 
Eventually you'll get more fluid with this though, right? So, um, okay. So this one's not too bad. Um, find the uh, derivative, evaluate it one half for this function. I don't know, maybe I'll give you just a minute to, to work those out and then I'll come behind in a minute and we'll put those up. Down here we've got, now we're moving, as usually we want to take these and mix them in. Take a little, take some inverse trig functions and all the other derivatives you know now and just mix them in, you know, product rule, put some quotient rule, little chain rule, throw these in, right? These are now in the mix. So what's the derivative of sine inverse? All right, evaluate it at one half. Are you okay with us writing like two over root three? Is that a cool thing to do? Yes. And also tell me, also tell me why that, uh, well, we won't go there. I wanna, I will, we'll, we'll, we got a whole lesson on inverses. There's an interesting thing that's happened there. Like two over root three is like maybe a number you recognize too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't recognize that I don't know. Let's, let's leave it there. Good job, let's keep going. All right. How about this guy? What's the derivative of the inverse cosine function? Negative that thing. Yeah, negative that thing. Negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus s squared squared. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Times 2x, right? If you want to write that all as one thing, like, you know, I don't know, negative 2x. Something like that. Okay. I'm moving on. I just assume everyone is good. Thanks, guys. Kill the chatter. Thanks. Let's do a few more. Says the same thing except with like the new. Yeah, we're doing all the same. As I said, throw these in now with the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule. Uh, the inverse trig functions have um, definitely have importance. The, the actually the trig functions that you might not see very often in life are the reciprocal trig functions. Except for uh, yeah, the reciprocal trig functions don't come up very much in the real world. I can't think of very many cases where that happens. Except in your algebra. Um, yeah, did we get this one? What's the what's the derivative of arctan? Is it still? It's, I erased it already. <laughs> one over one plus this thing squared uh, times the derivative of root x. Yeah, one half x to the negative one half. All right. Now we, there's some simplification that needs to be done. Uh, so what do we get here? One over Two root x times one plus x. I don't know. You could multiply it out, I guess, too. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, and the domain here is clearly x greater, strictly greater than zero, right? But you don't need to write that necessarily. But yeah, okay. Uh, Derek first. If we left it like it is on the left side, we lose points. Uh. I don't know. Depending on your mood. Depending on my mood, yeah, exactly. Don't fret. Don't. Um, yeah, Shivani, did you? That was your question, too. Uh, some of these simplify in nicer ways than others. This one is not terrible over here. I might simplify that at least to x. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> on the last one, you mean? Yeah. Oh, you mean like move this here? Yeah. I don't know. Fractions within fractions it might be a little bit like well, poor form. <laughs> Moving smartly along. What's the what's the derivative the derivative of secant inverse? Do we have that one? So one over the absolute value of this thing. Hey guys, thanks. Uh, times the square root of this thing squared minus one. Oh wait, times 
20 X cubed. Okay. And um, there are a couple things we could do here. We can write 20 X cubed over down here, we can actually write 5x to the fourth without absolute values. Tell me why. Right? Which means there's some more beautiful simplification that can be done here. Yes? You see it, don't you? I mean, these cancel out, don't they? We have just what? 4 over x root. Please do this, at least, right? I mean, this is good. Yes, it's That's too much. Do you can you just leave that as a first one? Just go, just go with it. I think it's a good habit because um, there will come a time soon in this course where you're going to be having to do this process backwards too. Um, it's, called, it's called integration. We're going to do some, some stuff later. Um, or anti-differentiation. And listen, um, if you see this, I need you to know that it like, came from this somehow, right? So, so I think it would be a good habit, even though whether I take a point off or not, God forbid, um, it would still be a good habit as you do your work to, to get in this habit of simple All right, good enough. Good enough for today. Thank you for listening. Kind of. All right. Have a great day, guys, and a good weekend.